So, that is the bung. This is going to be welded on the exhaust pipe. About right here. That's going to be the mount for the wideband 5-wire Bosch oxygen sensor for the wideband Power Commander tuner. That way it can reprogram the ECU by sending a fake signal into this wire. This is a temporary plug here. We're going to disconnect the OEM sensor by cutting the wire a couple inches out here and then carefully zip tying it and closing it up. That way we can reroute this wire back under here under the seat and we'll see that later in the video. We're going to start by removing exhaust system, we need to remove that center 12 millimeter bolt, the two front header bolts, and the rear bolt. Once we take these front bolts off here, we're going to gently let the exhaust down. Now remove that rear one there. We're going to take that nut off the back, slide it out, and just set the whole unit down. Incredibly, we're going to put the bolt back on and keep it in order. Use a little S-hook to pull the spring off. That's going to enable that down pipe. We need the header. That's that front piece. It's still hot from operating the motorcycle. This turned out to be really hard. Pull free. Finally, it's free. Now we're going to test fit it. We want to know... We're going to make a mark on there. We want the oxygen sensor about 10 or 15 degrees up. There we have it. Uh, wideband O2 bung is now added to the exhaust downpipe. This is the header for the Honda Grom. You can see some beautiful oxides on there. This is going to allow us to install the Bosch 5-wire wideband oxygen sensor to feed into the wideband controller, which will then talk with the PCV5 or Power Commander 5. Now we're going to reinstall the unit, just shove those pipes back together. In reality, you got to line them up when you're installing them, so wiggle it back together in rough shape. Once you get it seated, you're going to have to reattach the spring. We're going to put the bolt back in from the rear and hang it up. Now this is where the adjustment happens. you got to wiggle and adjust, make sure everything puts it together. Tighten everything up and then just make sure it's snug. Now we're going to take the body panels off. We're using a hex on those first three. We got to take those push pegs out of the front and then switch our bit. We're going to take a Phillips out of the top up there. Then we're going to take a Phillips out of the top up there. And then that panel kind of pulls free. We're examining from memory. There's a 12 millimeter bolt there, another 12 millimeter bolt. There's a big Phillips, three more Phillips underneath. Now, we're going to take the plug out of this bung. It's a big 8mm metric hex key. There's a brass or a copper washer with it. Keep hold of those in case you ever need to take the oxygen sensor out. This is the new Bosch oxygen sensor. It's a 5 wire wideband unit. Rotate the wiring harness as you thread the sensor into the bung. Go ahead and finger tight. Now we're going to use a crescent wrench and we're going to snug it down there and tighten it up. We give it a maybe 15, 20, 30 foot pounds snug. You don't want it coming loose. We're cut the OEM oxygen sensor wire, then zip tie it back to the little bracket snug down. We're going to cut off that zip tie. Now we're going to route that cable. That's the sensor cable that we want to fool the ECU with. We're going to send it back up through the top of the engine. These won't cut off. They're metal inside plastic, so you actually have to pull those off. It turns out it's just sliding them off. That's a plastic-coated fiberglass high-temperature wire sleeve. Just pull that through there. I threaded it back up this way. You need to get it into the battery box underneath. You'll see further routing goes behind this unit there and then pull it through and then we're going to send it back up into there. I zip tie it in there with great difficulty to make sure it doesn't wiggle free. Here we go with the zip ties. This looks easy but in fact in a cramped spot like that it's quite difficult. I eventually managed to zip tie the wire tight. Here's the oxygen sensor wire. It comes with this big weird Loctite connector. That's fun. We're going to zip tie that connector to this bracket right here. Tighten it down. Keep 
it away from the ignition coil, down low, and then we're gonna snake its wire loom up to the top. Now we're connecting the oxygen sensor wire to the wideband controller unit. This is kind of tricky. You, you really have to force the wires. You'll watch as a you really have to force them in there, and it can take a few tries. People have complained if it doesn't go all the way in, you want it to go in with the wire insulator all the way into the hole. This is surprisingly difficult, much more difficult than you might imagine. I'm going to time lapse the rest of this. So go ahead and hook up all your wires. You want to push each one in all the way through the foam into the holder and then snug down with a real small blade type screwdriver with that drive screw. You don't want these coming undone. Give each one of those maybe four or five foot pounds of torque. You want it nice and snug. You don't want that wire coming out. Be patient. This takes a while. Do it correctly. All right, so this is a tap down here off the brake light wire. It goes around here. I used a quick disconnect that goes to the relay's white wire. The red wire goes up here directly to the battery terminal. The blue wire is tapped into the red wire for the unit. The black and black and gray wire are grounded from the wideband into the bottom of the ground on the relay and then uh, we took the the green wire here I've taken some cable and then tapped off the oxygen sensor wire down here and then we just tuck that down and away and we velcroed the unit to the top here We've got the bus connector coming around here, plugged into here. We're just gonna shove all these wires down here into the fender. And that's how it's hooked up. So there it is, now I gotta put it all back together. But first, testing. Okay, so you actually have to tap the black wire. There's two greens, a green and a white and a regular green. One of the greens is the ground, one of them's hot, and the other one's hot. So the one that turns on with the ignition, when you turn it on then, we'll focus back here again. So we'll see when we turn the bike on, the brake light comes on, and then power commander and wideband tuner boot up. Finally, we've got it. Now for putting it back together and testing. This is the key to hooking up the relay. So you connect the red power wire to the, of the wideband commander to the blue wire on the relay. You ground out the black wire. You connect the red wire from the relay to the battery terminal. And the white wire is what you're gonna tap into the black wire of the tail light. This is an aftermarket eliminator kit, so it was a little weird with the wire colors, but. That's how you set up the relay. And the relay is important on the Grom SF as if you don't use it, the unit will stay on constantly and drain the battery. Cheers guys, thanks for watching. Custom 3D printing a gauge pod holder for the DynoJet Wideband 2 air fuel ratio monitor. This is the new DynoJet Pro air fuel ratio monitor mounted in my custom 3D printed housing. I've zip tied it to the handlebar using a abundant amount of different zip ties. It's relatively secure. I secured the output wire to the back of the clutch lever. So the housing is very secure. Let's have a look at what it looks like when you turn it on. So that tells you the air fuel ratio. And that's part of the wideband tuner that plugs into the Power Commander 5 and the Bosch 5-wire oxygen sensor. And that whole system acts to enable the high flow intake and exhaust uh, to produce more power. Oddly, without sacrificing fuel efficiency. 
Here we see the meter tripping out because the ECU is spitting out random data. That's because the engine is not on. We can see on startup here that it starts out very rich and then starts to lean out as the engine warms up. And you'll see the air fuel ratio is known as automatic enrichment and fuel injected engines do this. As the engine temperature increases, the mixture or air fuel ratio will become more lean and that can take several minutes. This is an air cooled engine. Here we can see the aftermarket oil cooler and stainless steel exhaust with the decibel killer. And this is the Bosch 5 wire oxygen sensor here that feeds up along here into the fuel injection control computer under the seat. After idling for about five minutes, we can see the air fuel ratio approaching 13. 14.7 is the ideal. This system is tuned for an average air fuel ratio of 13.5, enabling enhanced fueling with a free-flowing exhaust and intake.